quick to um, your name, your year, and your major. Let me just say, we are videotaping, so if you don't want to say your last name, you don't have to. Um, this will show up on UCTVs, and so make sure you see that. If you could also add when you're looking to go, that yeah, will help. That's very useful.
but the prerequisites are correct. And so what I'm finding from business students is that they don't realize that they need to both have managerial accounting and the um, financial management course completed beforehand because the course that you take for the first seven weeks as a business major is the ABM 4893, which is the business ethics course, an incredible course. Um, really just helps you think about business, think about what's going on in the world. Um, the students who are taking it are loving just the way that it challenges So those of you that are finance majors, because it's a UConn class, it counts as your residence requirement. So you probably know that at this point, which is always very helpful, always very nice to have that. The internship component for business majors, you have the ABM 4891, which will be five credits instead of six credits, and then you'll have a one credit reflection that goes along with that. Um, the class has already existed for this year, we just wanted to separate out those credits a little bit. Um, the reflection will be graded, Correct? Yes. Yeah, the reflection will be graded. The internship is satisfactory or satisfactory. So any questions for business students on the class, the credits they can get? Randy, I need yes. to say one thing about the reflection. Um, yes. We can call the course reflection because correct. It, it is yeah. a course that's already in the catalog and it's yep. called um, internship research paper. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's going to be yeah. one thing. Doesn't matter what's on the slide. No, it does going to show up yeah. on your transcript. Yeah. This is really just to stress that it's a reflection process that we want you to go through, which is really unique to this program. You will do internships otherwise, but one of the things that we really want you to be aware of going into it is that we're going to ask you to think about your experience. We're going to ask you to, to look at what's going on in the workplace, what you learned in the classes, or what you've learned in the classes already, and how that impacts you as a business professional, how that impacts you in your growth and development. So, I'm excited about it because I think one of the, the um, challenges with internships sometimes is students just don't spend a lot of time thinking about their experience. And so this is a really strong aspect of the program that we added in as of this past fall and really helped students to understand their experience a little more critically. Hey, do you want to talk about that process at all? Yeah, yeah, the, the first class. Yeah, the reflection. reflection. Yeah. yeah, so basically you met like once every two weeks, and you basically just talked about um, good experiences that you have with your internship, bad experiences that you have with your internship, and just basically everyone just shared their stories and kind of like built off each other and kind of like gave advice if they had any advice to give. And then at the end of the internship, we had, um, uh, at the end of the class, we had a, um, like write an essay, and it was a SWOT analysis, which is like strength, weakness, weakness opportunity, threat, and in terms of your internship. And so those are also a really great way to reflect on your entire experience because, um, yeah, you generally don't do that. Like in my other internships, I really never reflected on what I learned and how it affected me and all that. So this was kind of really cool to do. Okay, good. So um, one of the other things that you can do as far as curriculum is concerned is you can take an additional course is what I listed off. Um, I don't know if those are changing for the fall, but these are the ones that are on the website right now. Um, <clears throat> these are great ways to just add in additional credits if you need the additional credits, but I know sometimes 12 credits isn't quite what you need to get to graduation. Um, these are also really um, just fascinating classes, very connected to what's going on in London and the opportunities that are there. Um, if I was going to be a student there, I would take the Shakespeare one because I kind of like Shakespeare a lot. Um, so if you're looking for those extra credits, if you're looking for a different type of class, just to expand your experience there and connect a little bit more um, with the culture and the experience, these are really great classes for you. The important thing to know is all of these are all 14 weeks, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they run 14 weeks in the other classes, the courses are for the first seven and then you get the internship um, and the reflection and So any questions on the classes for business students? Do you want to add anything about each of classes now? <coughs> um, we can. Uh, the, uh, it, you'll be taking the same course and you'll all be in the for as far as, well, that's true for both business ethics and uh, this econ slash finance course. So what we've done is we've created a course that is going to satisfy the requirements both for international finance for an economics major and uh, corporate finance activities for <coughs> finance majors. So there's going to be some, you know, exchange rate determination stuff on the econ side. There's going to be some corporate stuff on the 
on the business side, hedging and that right kind of stuff. So that's that sort of thing. And we've got a young um, adjunct there. His name is uh, Luca, and he's a he's a great guy. He teaches at uh, Birkbeck College, which is right nearby, and uh, so he's just kind of doing this for us. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so that's another thing. I, I guess the Brandy, uh, I guess the Brandy will be talking about that. But this is actually, a, uh, in a sense, a Yukon campus in in London, which is like a very different experience from an exchange at another university. So you, you're going to be talking yep, about, uh, about that. There's a staff there. There's a, a, a corner of that of Russell Square there. They they occupy a couple floor or so on a, a building right on right on Russell Square. There's a yeah. president director who's an English woman called Jill Fenton. There's also a, a young guy that works with them called Dave Hopper, and he's the one who's going to run the. Uh, uh, talk more about Dave. He's the one who's going to run the reflection thing and kind of help you with your internships. Um, the only thing to keep in mind for econ majors, you guys might want to come talk to me if you're serious about this, but um, is you got to make sure that you've had um, intermediate macro. Because intermediate macro is a prerequisite for the international community. Yeah. Does it matter when you complete those courses? Like, that's why I'm taking one of those during the summer. That's fine. That's fine. As long as you, as long as you have it before. And the way this works with the registrar's office is that you'll see on your transcript in the fall, if you're going to the fall, that they'll have something like OFFC something or other, which is uh, official or something. And then when you get back, study abroad puts their heads together with the registrar's office, and that's when those courses go in. Into your transfer, so nobody's going to worry about a prereq. You know, while you're, while you're there. Um, all, none of you have taken international finance yet, correct? So this is the location of the facilities, and so um, the offices are located there. You have access to this university resources, which is a few blocks away. Um, all of you will take the, the tube, the train, into there. The tube station is located right at the top there, that little red symbol on Russell Square. So, um, really great space. There's lots of coffee shops, there's food in the area. You'll be moving a little further away from there. We can talk a little bit about that. I don't know the housing, the housing changes from time to time, so um, it just depends on where you'll be. So, you have to jump on the tube to get to where the courses are, are taught, and usually a lot of them are going to be taught right along this street here. Um, but great facilities, great location, really nice park there. So for those of you that are there in the spring or in the fall time, you'll be able to spend a little time outside in the location. Um, if you were there in the fall, do you actually want to add to the space? Because I was there in the winter, so it was cold. <laughs> right. Or uh, do you want me to talk about the weather in general or like just um, the sure. area? Or if you're like, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I think going in the fall is the best time to go because the first month we were there, it didn't rain one bit. Like it was such nice, it was, the weather was fantastic. And then also when you go on, on um, your fall break, um, like a lot of people went to Italy and Spain, and the weather there was fantastic. So I definitely think in terms of weather-wise, it's the best place to go. Um, in uh, the area that we lived in, um, and we were with Debbie, it was fantastic. Um, we, yeah, the, there's a lot of uh, coffee shops and uh, restaurants. So whenever we had a uh, class around lunchtime, we'd go eat somewhere, and then we would go to class. Um, a lot of us actually took the bus to class because um, there's one that goes like right to uh, the like the step of the facility so it's really convenient. But yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So we have a little bit about the classrooms and a little bit about where it's located. Hey, um, any questions about the information that we have here at this point before we move on to talk about some of the parts? Okay. So we talked a little bit about how you get around um, with the use of trains buses, um, the tube. Every student who's there right now has had a really easy time navigating. Um, so these are just a picture of their adventures. Uh, I took trains the whole time I was there. It's very easy. I usually like, walk like, pretty close when I was leaving, maybe the night before or the day before. So it's really easy to get around. I was traveling from city to city. So it's a really great opportunity. You're able to get to this is the group that went to the Anna's factory in Dublin, which I've been there myself. We probably shouldn't tell them the drinking age is 18. <laughs> Part of the experience, so. Um, but the only time I've actually been able to take a group of students out to the club is when I went to the city. Uh -huh. yeah. That's actually an experience that we, that we 
past we've had people who've gotten an internship with like a one person company and it was just a startup and they got to do all kinds of, they got to do all kinds of things. So I think you need to think about what it is you want to get out of the what it is you want to get out of the internship. Uh, and they're gonna give you these these opportunities. We have a there's depending on how many of you there are, there's uh, a couple of companies that we work with who do the internship placement. Um, and that's what they do for a living. They have all these contacts. So they, you can talk to them about the kind of experience you want, whether you want something a little bit more offbeat, something that you know, would help you see, sort of see what really goes on in, in the UK or whether you want to be in, in the, one, of the, one of the brand name kind of places. So what do you think about that? Where was your internship? I was a marketing and sales engineer. <laughs> but yeah, it was literally exactly what I wanted. I literally said, I want to start up our marketing sales. That's what I got. So okay. I was really happy with it. I learned a lot. What types of things did you do? So one thing I did was um, use Salesforce's CRM tool, which is a very, very important tool in the tech industry in terms of marketing and leads and sales. And so I was able to use that to track uh, people who would be interested in buying our software. And then I also used Google Analytics analyze the company website to see how what certain pages were doing and how well they were doing and what pages should be removed and basically how the website was going to turn out. And then I used uh, the sales navigator tool on LinkedIn to find potential people who would be interested in using um, our application and then I created a list that then our tech supervisor used to um, like use contact with them and basically uh, yeah and then I also created marketing
we have some doubles. Um, my suspicion that people depend on the size of the students to go, which everybody will be in the next time the students. Um, located in groups of about 20, so if there's a group of 40 students, typically we'll have two different locations for housing. Um, do you only live with students that are in this program, or like all different participants? Anybody from
except that you can't see what's in his hand, which is kind of funny. This is not our students, but definitely some interesting things going on.
and then come talk to us about some of the logistics of how this is built. You do have the budget sheet on there. It's on, <coughs> excuse me, it's on the website. Um, there is going to be a slight difference between fall and spring, but it's going to look really similar. Um, you have the first four fees, the study abroad fee, the registration fee, infrastructure technology. That's paid for by any study abroad student. No matter where you go, you're going to pay those fees just to keep your status as a matriculating student here at UConn. The next fee is going to be specific to this program. It is going to vary just a tiny bit between fall and spring. So program <coughs> is going to cover the cost of, say, your classes, the resources that you have, other like your trips that you're doing, basically they take the entire cost of running the program and divide it by the amount of students you typically go, and that's where you get those program fees. So that's what you're paying instead of tuition. And it covers things that are slightly different than what you have here, but basically that's going to be what you're paying. And then your room. You're not going to have a meal plan. As Brandy was talking about, you're going to be cooking on your own, or you could go out to dinner, or you know, it really depends on preferences, your budget, um, stuff like that. But your housing will be covered. Uh, round trip airline ticket, that's going to be covered as well. The estimate is on here. It may shift slightly, um, but we try to give you the closest estimate as we can. And then your ISIC, your International Student ID card, and health insurance will be covered. And that'll all be on your fee bill. So if you get your fee bill from the first year, you'll see all those costs. Yeah. Um, if we decide to go early and try We do work with a woman in our office to, that handles all of the flights. Mm -hmm. And that's a conversation we could have with her and Ms. Cheryl. I don't know, Dora, if you've had a lot of experience with people going early. So we typically, for the UConn programs, we have a lot of UConn programs, we like the students to fly together. Okay, and it's also a lot easier because it's much, it's just much more, um, it's an easier <coughs> situation if everybody arrives at the same time. That being said, if you have a le legitimate reason why you are not going to travel with the group, then you would um, you would contact Cheryl Blaine in our office and talk to her ahead of time or as soon as you could about um, sort of petitioning to have it to do flights on your own. Right? And that also works for students who want to leave later after the program ends. So if you are interested in doing that, then you talk to Cheryl and she'll arrange that with it's important to do that before we lock in the tickets because we just assume that everybody is going to travel together. Yeah. So like if we want to like not because like so let's say like we want to travel on our own without um, the group that would that get um, taken away from the bus trip or for us? Traveling on the, with the group, or I would like you to I'll answer. Um, any travel you do like on the weekends that is no no I mean I'm sorry I meant for like the the park okay. day. Yeah, would yeah. that get taken off our personal budget? That would get taken off oh, okay. of your fee bill. Okay. Okay, if you plan it yourself. Yeah. Do you know when the start date is? Like when you want to have? I don't have it off the top of my head. We can certainly look it up. I don't know if you know what the top of your head is. For the girls that are here, it should be in, in the brochure. Sorry, I don't have it here. September 13th. Right, I basically just set a budget for the entire 
process for you and lead you in the right direction, or you could organize something yourself. Right, there's so, something called International Friends, and they organized a trip to um, Amsterdam and Belgium. That was like one trip, and then they also uh, organized another trip to Paris. And so that's really nice because they literally pay for uh, your transportation there. Well, like, obviously, like you pay them like a standard like 200 pounds, and then they take um, they they organize like where you live, where you, how you're getting there, like what you're gonna do there. So that's kind of you pay for like the convenience. So that was also pretty cool. Yeah. And of course, there's two prices for the Netherlands. There's one for Thank <laughs> you.